Hello everybody, my name is Ryan Guard, and welcome back for more Pokemon Platinum. In the last part, we did a lot of capturing around Pasoria City, and in this part, hmm, you might be asking yourself, why are we here in front of the Tower of Lostness? I believe it's called the Lost Tower. Because we never actually did anything in here. We just, you know, <laughs> walked right in and just captured ourselves, um, a ghastly, but, uh, you know, I would actually like to complete the entire tower now that, you know, uh, I actually got myself, uh, a little HM slave over here, Miss Alexander, um, because, you know, now I have somebody to teach Defog to, because the thing is, I was, um, as you can see, your <laughs> nurses is now as Thunder. Uh, I went back to um, Veilstone to get myself the Thunder TM because I thought to myself that, you know, Narcissus has approximately as much special attack as it has attack and, you know, Thunder could come in handy, maybe, sometimes, especially against, I don't know, a Gyarados? <laughs> uh, I don't know how much it would really do because, as I said, it, Narcissus' special attack is even lower than its attack. Uh, well, you you see there that it did something, but I mean, that Shata was what ten levels lower than us. <laughs> so I would I would take that result with a grain of salt. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I just thought about the fact that you know it could be a very good uh, Gyarados counter. So there's that because I'm thinking of right after we take on the tower to. Uh, take on all the fishermen that we skipped over to get to uh, Pastoria. Oh, oops. Oh, gosh darn it. I need to pull up a rappel. Because I don't need to see another goddamn Subat in my life. <laughs> I've seen enough Subats to last me a lifetime. I played the original Red and Blue Girl. <laughs> um, yeah, the, that is actually a thing that um, I don't think about too much is that, you know, I actually played the original Red and Blue and Yellow when, you know, they were out. Um, and especially thinking about it now, that, you know, because when I got Pokemon Yellow, I was, um, I believe it was five years old. Either five or six, I believe. I'm pretty sure it was five, though. Uh, so, so I got Pokemon Yellow and I was able to play through it, and thinking back to it, like, f five years old, like, how in the hell did I manage to do some of the things that, you know, were required to actually make it through that game? Like, you know, you have to get... Like, there's a lot of things that are pretty esoteric in the older games. Um, like, how would you know to, you know, get the cut TM? How would... well, HM... How would I know to teach it to somebody and use it? How would, like, like, surf and freaking, like, all of these things that, how in the hell did a five-year-old figure that shit out? <laughs> and, I, like, that is not, you know, speaking of my intelligence, because, you know, <laughs> I don't think of myself as some kind of wonder child or something, because that wasn't just me. Like, there was a lot of five-year-olds that played through those games and managed to get through it. And like, how did we do it? <laughs> how did we manage to do that? But, uh, I suppose we just managed. I, I, it's, it's the kind of thing, uh, the, the, I guess, proverb about the thousand monkeys and a thousand typewriters, you know, logically. Well, is it logically? I suppose. Logically, if you if those thousand monkeys on the thousand typewriters, you you gave them an infinite amount of time, you would have the complete works of Shakespeare, you know, eventually, because you know, eventually those buttons would be pressed <laughs> in the sequence that would you know result in that, and it's the same kind of practice here that you know, <laughs> eventually you after throwing everything against a wall, something's got to work, and, you know, when you're a kid, you know, like when you're, you know, between the ages 5 and 10, what the fuck else are you gonna do? <laughs> like, 
<laughs> like you're not able to masturbate yet. Like whatever, what else are you gonna do? So uh, that that was you know just what we did. We just slammed our heads against the wall until something happened. <laughs> or I suppose that we you could say it as you know we uh, uh, did the. Is, is, is it the Skinner experiment? I think it might have been Skinner or somebody else that did the whole thing where um, <laughs> you have a button on a wall and you have rats press it until finally they get something. Uh, but it's totally random. You you know you uh, <laughs> you know uh, the something dropping down is you know totally random. It could happen. Every button press it could have happen, you know, in a hundred button presses, but it will eventually drop something. <laughs> and you know the the rat wouldn't stop at just one. It it, it will continue to press the button because it's just the rush of finally getting something is very powerful. But that was not the point that I was trying to make. The point I was trying to make is that you know we just push the button as many times as it takes for something to happen. And eventually something does happen, and, you know, we're, we're super ecstatic, because, you know, <gasps> something finally happened, I made it further, I'm, all of a sudden I'm in a place where trainers are battling me again, because, you know, it's, it's Generation 1, and, you know, if you defeat a trainer, they're defeated forever, and you can never rebattle them, because rebattling trainers is bad. <laughs> I mean, it definitely feels that way with how uh, Game Freak is doing things nowadays, it's like... You got the VS Seeker in, uh, in uh, Fire and Leaf Green, and then subsequently in uh, in uh, the Sinnoh, I should say, to be more, the most precise. Um, and also in uh, Hoenn, you could rebattle trainers with uh, trainers' eyes, or well, the Pokenav in general. Um, and in Heart Gold Soul Silver, there are s you can use the phone. But it's, you know, not the most reliable thing in the world. Hello. Uh, and in general, there's a lot of different ways you can do this. Um, but I feel like, for example, in Generation 5, you couldn't rebattle a lot of trainers. There were, there were certain trainers you could battle, you know, the, the, you had the stadiums you could rebattle trainers. Um, but not much else. And I suppose in Generation 6, there wasn't much option for rebattling either except for certain areas like for example the battle uh, uh, Chateau I believe it is yeah the battle Chateau where the rich trainers were oh excuse me and then in generation 7 I mean were there really any place you could rebattle people I suppose there was that one place in uh, in Haoli you know the big city on the first island and um, you know you always have the elite four but uh you know <laughs> sometimes you got to train up something that can't take on the elite four and then what do you do well I mean I don't know I guess it's just one of those things you know Cause, uh, at least you always do have the option of rebattling trainers, with, like, rebattling some trainers. Like even in Generation One, uh, there are the Elite Four you could always uh, rebattle, but you know, those are the only ones. Like that's like that kind of sucks. That uh, because after you defeated the Elite Four, there was really nothing for you to do. <laughs> like, there's no post game or anything. Um, well, unlike in Generation 3 in Kanto, where you could actually, you know, you you actually had a pretty sizable post-game, um, with, um, friggin', um, the Sevi Islands and shit. Oh, God damn it! do we really have to go all the way down again? Oh! <laughs> um, yeah, with, uh, Sevi, which I, oh. I'm not gonna go on another on another rant because I I think I'm I think I've already talked about Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee Edition. Uh, well, <laughs> just to know, even even though you know it's, there's the whole uh, 
rebuttal of people complaining about the game. It hasn't even come out yet. How do you know it's bad? Girl, I don't think we need to see more than we've already seen to know it's a heaping pile of shit. <laughs> like, come on. It is pretty inexcusable, the shit that they pull in that game. But even so, I'm not going to go into it because I've already talked about it a lot. But specifically, I do want to talk about this one thing. <laughs> <laughs> Just this one thing, though, is that it's so sad that most likely, again, the game hasn't come out, so we don't actually know, but f uh, I, I think they have revealed that, 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 you know, it is just gonna follow Pokemon Yellow, and that's it. It's gonna be nothing else other than that, which means, you know, probably... Either no post-game whatsoever, which would be just the worst, or there would be like a teeny tiny small post-game. Like, you know, there's, uh, there is Mewtwo, but, you know, that's it. Which means we really sad, because, you know, I know it's a yellow remake, and, you know, the Savvy Islands were fire and leaf green and not in yellow, but, uh, that never, like, that didn't stop you know, the Heart Gold Soul Silver remakes, because, you know, Heart Gold Soul Silver, they're remakes of um, Gold and Silver, not Crystal. But that didn't stop them from adding all the good shit they did in Crystal. So, like, there's no reason for them not to add the stuff they optimized in Leaf Green, Fire and Leaf Green, actually. So, you know, I'm just really sad and mad <laughs> that they don't include the Savvy Islands, because I, I, I suppose it, like, it, it comes from two places. Like, one, uh, just objectively, I think it's pretty shitty of them to have, you know, just ignore good things they've done in the past. And generally, you know, it's pretty bad of them to not have a... Like, not flesh out the game at all. Like, <laughs> they're giving us, like, a bare-bones skeleton of a game. And, I'm, like, I mean, give us. I know it is supposed to be for uh, newcomers of the series, but <laughs> you could still make a game that could appeal to veterans. Like, it wouldn't be that hard. If you already are gonna make a game, why make a game that, you know, almost purposely, you know, alienates veterans? Like, that just makes no sense to me. So, like, there's the objective side of it, but then there's also, you know, the nostalgia part of me, because, you know, I'm not a nostalgic for Generation 1, really. Like, there's, like, bits and pieces where it's like, I remember that from when I was, like, fucking six years old or whatever. Uh, and n not even too much from Generation 2, like, like, Generation 2 is where I start to gain a little bit of that, uh, nostalgia feeling. Like, playing through Pokemon Crystal is like, uh, Oh, that, you know, I remember this from when I was a kid. But where my nostalgia, you know, personally where it's strongest, is in Generation 3. Like, that's right in that period of time, you know, between 8 and 10 years old. Because uh, I believe I was uh, 8 when uh, Ruby and Sapphire came out. Yeah, yeah, because that was 2003 and that was when I turned 8. And then, you know, Emerald was in 2005 when I turned 10, so that is, you know, right in that sweet spot of nostalgia. Uh, so I'm not nostalgic for, you know, Red and Blue. I am, however, very nostalgic for a Fire and Leaf Green. So, you know, uh, to see them completely ignore everything that made Fire and Leaf Green so good, because, you know, they were just, you know, quote-unquote, just remakes of, uh, oh, sorry about that, <laughs> of uh, Red and Blue, but they did add a lot of stuff, like, it's so sad to see, you know, remakes go from, you know, Fire and Leaf Green, which were very good, Heart Gold Soul Silver, which were fucking great, to, like, Omega Ruby Sapphire, which were, like, the biggest pile of meh there ever was and you know <laughs> I I'm like 
of course, I'm like super hyped for if they ever do, um, Jesus, what is that? Sorry, excuse me? Sorry about that. Um, of course I'm super hyped for if they ever make, like, a, a Sinnoh remakes. Um, <laughs> like, obviously I'm gonna be, you know, on the forefront of people that are like, Oh my god, Sinnoh confirmed the fucking cream in my pants over here, because, you know, to see, just, just to see Sinnoh on, like, the Switch, for example, because, you know, most likely that's gonna be what's gonna happen is that, you know, well, it's, it's a big possibility that, you know, Generation 8 is gonna be on the Switch, you know, probably gonna be two games on the Switch, you know, of the, of the Generation 8 Pokemon games, and then there might be like the uh, Generation 4 thing where they put out the third version and then remakes. Or they might just do the Generation 6 roots and just pull, put out the remix right after that. Because, you know, it, it's pretty much, like, a confirmed at this point that, you know, they've already remade three generations of Pokemon. Even though, because, you know, uh, Ruby and Sapphire could theoretically transfer a Pokemon from Ruby and Sapphire all the way up to Generation 7. So they are technically compatible, but they still remade them, so there's a good chance. Uh, like, I would be baffled if they didn't remake, uh, uh, Diamond and Pearl into, like, I don't know, <laughs> some kind of Diamond and Pearl remake name, I don't know. I, I'm not that creative at the very moment. Um, so of course I'm gonna be hyped for it. But I'm also, like, kind of terrified, because I'm, I'm like, oh, great, how are they going to fuck this up? <laughs> like, oh my god, could you imagine if they did just a one, like, one-for-one one remake like they've been doing up to this point? Like, even, okay, now that is actually a very good point. Even Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Which, you know, they remade a Game Boy Advance... No, not even Game Boy... They remade a Game Boy game on DS. They... That was not a one-for-one one remake. It's close. But it's still a little bit expanded here and there. Like, they... <laughs> they added a little bit of breathing room everywhere. Actually, I'm... Hmm, I'm not sure if it... Hmm... Well, okay, if it is a one-for-one one remake, as in, you know, every one step is the same in both the remake and uh, the original game, as in, you know, the, the areas are just as big, it's just the graphics that are updated, which, you know, that is just inexcusable. Like, <laughs> you're remaking this on, you know, like, for example, going from Game Boy Advance to 3DS, there, you have so mu many assets available. You could have made Hoenn gigantic, but instead, you know, it's it because you know it doesn't feel small on the Game Boy Advance because you know the the system and the graphics are limited, so it doesn't feel small. But Hoenn made you know one for one on the 3DS feels pretty small because it's like <laughs> like just think about the fact that Xenoblade was on the same console as you know uh, Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire That huge, expansive world was on the same console as that very cramped, tiny-spaced game. 
Like, what kind of fucking excuse do they have for that? Like, oh, we just wanted to remake it exactly as it was. Nobody wants that. <laughs> wow, I just realized. I just said, like, I don't know, ten minutes ago that I wasn't going to go on a rant, and here we are. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, just, I just have so many emotions and feelings about this. <laughs> Especially when it comes to remakes. Um, I suppose my point was just that uh, I am going to be on the forefront of the hype train, but I'm very afraid that they're going to fuck it up like they did with Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire. Because I feel like they fucked up on that. Because uh, I feel like they, they could have done it better. A lot better. <laughs> but they didn't. And that disappoints me. And that's just the thing, too, that they, the games weren't bad. Like, I, I, I can't say that the games were bad. They were just disappointing. <laughs> like, oh. They, I expected so much more. Coming f okay. Coming from Heart Gold Soul Silver to Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire, that is disappointing. <laughs> Can't you see him fishing? <laughs> Jeez. God, my voice suddenly turned dry. <laughs> uh, I suppose it's all the the fans of Omega Ruby Alpha Sapphire and Let's Go that are cursing me. <laughs> No, Jesus. Of course, that's not the case. Ooh. Hmm. Uh, sure. <laughs> Let's go. It's okay. <laughs> I'm very sorry, but I think I'm gonna take like a a minute break just to cough and hack a little bit. So excuse me for a sec. Ah, so sorry about that. <laughs> Don't know what happened, but my throat just dried up like something crazy. Don't know why it does that, but uh, apparently it felt like doing that right then. Also, I don't like this Gyarados. <laughs> uh, I, ch I switched out right then because I, I might have been able to kill it with Thunder, but I definitely didn't want to take the chance because uh, what if it survived? And then, you know, it would have killed me with Dragon Rage. Since, you know, that's a flat 40 HP of damage, which is really overpowered this early. Well, okay, not like we're at the point where a Dragon Rage isn't the most devastating, but it's still pretty scary because, you know, if you look at our team, a lot of our Pokemon are, well, actually none of them are two-shotted by, uh, by a Dragon Rage, but, uh, <laughs> it's still uh, capable of doing a lot of damage if we don't have uh, max HP. I think actually I'm going to put Narcissus back uh, to the front, because uh, I think most of these trainers would uh, be better off being taken care of by Narcissus. So let's just do that. <laughs> wow. Apparently, I forgot to put my phone on silent. Jeez. Sorry about that. I guess I could do that right now. While the intro is playing. There. Fish Fisherman Josh. <laughs> Actually, how much PP do we have left to Thunder? I seem to remember that we didn't heal. Oh. Still, still have eight. That's not... Oh, I, I was thinking for a moment there, like, how in the hell is that thing faster than us? Because, uh, Narcissus, if, if Narcissus has one good stat, it is definitely speed. Uh, but no, it's, uh, because of, uh, Swift Swim. So, we need to, we need to be careful. <laughs> Not really, because, you know, let's see how much this does. <laughs> wow. That is pretty pathetic. <laughs> I suppose I shouldn't expect too much since, you know, Goldeen is a physical Pokemon and, you know, 
water pulse coming from a Galdeen. Also, the fact that Narcissus has actually pretty solid special defense. Really, in general, it's a it is kind of a weird Pokemon, and with the fact that it's a it's a fast tank, which is not something you see too often. Uh, like usually you see, you know, fast attackers, you know, like glass cannons, or you see um, slow defensive Pokemon, but uh, Labunny happens to be a, a fast defensive Pokemon. So, that's pretty weird. Level 26. I mean, the, the other Gyarados will level is level 29, so it's not going to be too accurate, but let's see what a Thunder can do. Oh, <laughs> of course. I just wanted to see how well it would have done. Come on. Okay, that was that was a very annoying sound. <laughs> Sorry about that. Oh, we just got intimidated, so this might not actually kill, <laughs> which would be kind of sad not being able to kill a Barboach. No, wow. <laughs> Narcissus is actually pulling through. Surprisingly enough. <laughs> also, in case you were wondering, uh, the reason why it didn't enter the the gym in Pastoria is the fact that uh, <laughs> if we try to enter the gym, uh, it, there's going to be a rival battle. So, uh, and that 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 is the first rival battle that I would say is actually scary, like the one you have. Uh, Right after Fantina, eh, it's not really too scary, because uh, his Pokemon aren't really that strong. But in this one, oh, Like, I'm not sure if he actually has a fully evolved starter yet. But I actually don't know what the difference is between this one and the other one. But I just know that I've lost plenty of Pokemon to that rival battle. Like, not all at once, but I've lost like one or two here and there, like, in different runs. Like, I, th I think I've had more fights where I've lost Pokemon, where I've had fights where everyone survived, so... I want to do as much grinding as possible before I take on that. Um, well, I, it's not really grinding, per se, because I'm just, you know, taking on the trainers we haven't fought yet, which... You know, I suppose somebody could call it grinding, but I, I mean, I'm not, I'm not going out of my way to gain experience. Like, I'm not a rebattling trainers or, a, you know, grinding against wild Pokemon. So, I don't know. I suppose that just comes down to your definition of uh, grinding. Also, just a fun thing that I thought of is because uh, it used. Uh, Sand attack right then is, you know, it's a very peculiar thing in uh, Generation 1 and 2 is um, the fact that for some reason uh, your opponents, uh, well, not if you're playing in, uh, you know, against a human player, but if you're playing against the NPCs, uh, the NPCs have like an, an, an additional chance of, uh, of missing if they use a status move, like even if they use for example, Thunder Wave, uh, they still have a chance to miss, because I guess, uh, I guess Game Freak, even back then, didn't really have, uh, that much, uh, faith in the players. Uh, I shall put up on screen right now, how big was that miss chance? Gosh, there's some kind of lag going on, and I have no idea why that's the case. Definitely, it's, it, it definitely shouldn't be my computer, because uh, my uh, my computer is uh, really beefy. <laughs> I find it reassuring to be on this damp soil. Why? <laughs> that sounds terrible. Well, not terrible, but not fun. <laughs> like, I, I definitely love, you know, I love water and I love rain at least aesthetically, 
but I hate being out in the rain, and I hate being wet, but I'm not supposed to be. Like, sure, if I'm, you know, taking a bath, or, you know, swimming, or showering, then I, then I love being wet, because, you know, that's the point of doing those activities, is getting wet. But, you know, <laughs> walking out in the rain and getting drenched, not my cup of tea. <laughs> Oh, and especially, you know, what he just talked about with, uh, you know, walking about, uh, and then, you know, <sighs> getting water inside your shoes, like, you know, getting your socks all wet and soggy and just, ugh, that is just the worst. Allison and Jeffrey, okay. <laughs> I suppose I, you know, could give a... Because we're coming up on 30 minutes right now, but, uh... Eh. I kind of want to take care of the entirety of Route 212 right now, because, uh... I want to be able to grind a little bit against, uh... A certain duo of trainers that we're coming up on, uh... To the north of here, because Route 212 is technically... The entire route uh, that stretches from Hartholm to Pastoria, but it is divided uh, between a north and a south part. And I do uh, make a distinction between those parts, uh, like um, how I do, for example, in the Great Marsh, I do count them as different areas because uh, they're so radically different uh, with what you can encounter there. Ooh, Leafeon. I do believe that thing has a uh, Razor Leaf. Which, you know, not the worst. Well, especially not now. <laughs> Thanks, spicy meme. Hmm. And I think, by the way, that Rocks Raquel is going to evolve uh, when it hits 37, I believe the, the randomizer said. <laughs> oh, lord. Wow, that, that was a very drastic speed up. <laughs> oh lord. I don't know what is in that grass specifically, but, uh. Well, I do know that there's, uh. A Curlia, at the very least. Curlia and Roselia, I know, is in the grass down there. But I don't know specifically what is in there. Oh, th these these two, by the way, are some really good contenders for uh, grinding for uh, money. But there are some better options, too. Oh, helping hand, you booty. <laughs> no, it's not, not the worst. Don't think Primplup has anything we need to specifically worry about. Oh, come on! <laughs> Uh, this is why we should have had Ice Fang, or Ice Punish, or Ice Beam, or anything that isn't Blizzard. <laughs> well, I suppose Icy Wind would have also been pretty bad, because it's so weak. I mean, Icy Wind does have its uses, like, it's pretty useful in, uh, in you know, double battles in general, because, you know, being able to lower the speed of both your opponents, well, that's actually pretty good. But, uh, just in-game, eh, what do you, when you know, you encounter about, you know, 10, 15 double battles total. Not the best. Oh, I spotted an item. Ooh, I believe we're able to get a luxury ball. Ooh. Yes, <laughs> I'm a I'm a big fan of luxury balls, cause uh, luxury balls. Uh, I believe they double any friendship you gain. Um, that might be the case. Um, yeah, I think they double any friendship you gain. So that is pretty good if you gain like uh, some good friendship points with that, As especially if you. Um, Couple it with uh, the Soothe Bell, you know, get that big fat gain. 
<laughs> oh, swagger, hooray. I believe this book is of Manaphy. Yep. So now, Manaphy is in our Pokedex, which, actually, speaking of... Scene 113... Oh! We're actually more than halfway done with the... Uh, the regional Pokedex. That's pretty fun. Well, you know, when it comes to seeing Pokemon, not, not when it comes to capturing them. The, that, we're far from that. Ooh, I believe we can capture either a Pichu or a Pikachu in here. So, I'll, I'll see you back when I got one of those. Oh! Oh! Somebody got their way up to level 37! <laughs> oh, that is just beautiful. Your rocks were cow evolved into golem. Daphne! Now let's take that uh, experience here off of you, because you don't need any more experience. What a beauty. And, I mean, just the fact that we have Rock Blast and Earthquake. And, for the matter of fact, we also have Rock Polish, which is a pretty excellent move. <sighs> See you back when I've found the Pichu or Pikachu. Hello? Well, that happened quickly. <laughs> Actually, it, it took a little while, because I actually meandered around the grass and wasn't able to find anything, but, uh... God damn it, I'm completely forgetting about the quick balls. <sighs> oh, well. By the way, uh, in that little break, uh... Well, should I reveal it right now? Nah. I'm gonna reveal it in the next episode. Mmm... <laughs> So y'all have at least something to look forward to. <laughs> oh, come on. You little douche. Oh, that is, uh... Mmm. Very spicy. Mmm. Delicious. Actually, technically, I, sh I should use the luxury ball on this one. And now I can't. <laughs> oh, well. It's not like I have a shortage of uh, happiness raising berries. <laughs> Electric sax. Freaking sax. I don't know, Saxophonic. <laughs> That's a fun name. Also, I, I took the liberty of checking um, the um, friggin' uh, encounter rates for what we can encounter in the in Route 212 North, and uh, that is uh, pretty much the only thing I'm interested in is the Curlia, so, uh, <laughs> oh, that is uh, probably what I'm gonna go for. It would actually be pretty nice to get a, a male Curlia. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, because then you you do have the option of getting either Gardevoir or Curlia. No, Gardevoir or Glade. But I know there are some purists out there that would hate the idea of a male Gardevoir, but to you people, I say get your... <laughs> get your dick off of your mind. Girl. Oh, there we go. Hello. <laughs> One male Curlia coming up. And this time I actually <laughs> remembered to use the quick ball. Hooray. Ooh, yes. Curlia was caught. Now what to name you, little, little sir? 
I know. <laughs> Why not? Aquaria. After one of one of my favorite drag queens. Well, I wouldn't exactly say favorite. That's you know. Uh, I, I try not to use words like favorite unless I really mean it. <laughs> Keyword being try. <laughs> uh, so I, I wouldn't. Say Aquaria is one of my favorites, but I definitely do like her. She's a, she's very talented. I can definitely admire her uh, craftsmanship. That is for diddly darn sure. If it pleases you, may I challenge you to a battle? I have to have a battle with a young trainer like yourself. is quite nerve wracking. I actually really like the the female there, the socialite. Well, the, n not her, that specific one, but uh, the the trainer class in general. I really li like the design. Um, actually, kind of it reminds me it reminds me a lot of my um, my uh, grandmother. Actually, well, my uh, my maternal grandmother, who you know, sadly has passed away, but uh, she was definitely a woman of class and dignity, and that's what. She reminds me of, because she she used to go to uh, you know one of those uh, uh, I don't know what you call them friggin' uh, put up on a screen what the word for it is but one of those groups <laughs> and uh, that's the kind of attire she might have worn to one of those establishments like literally I think she might have had it. Uh, like a an entire look that was pretty much that exact look, like the that kind of hat and that kind of coat and everything. Never, don't think she was really one for high heels though, because I think the socialite has uh, some heels on her. Not not the biggest heels in the world, but let's look. Take Luke. Oh no, she doesn't. Yeah, that's a very accurate representation of my grandmother. <laughs> Um, I think that is it actually, because there's not much else we can do on this route. Because all of these uh, policemen will, uh, they will only battle us if, uh, if it's night. So that is it, really. And um, now I'm gonna take like a a good chunk of time to uh, grind, because there there are no trainers that we can battle anymore. So. Uh, I'm gonna take use the Versa Seeker for all it's worth to grind up because um, the next leader, his strongest Pokemon is level 37. Uh, I'm not gonna grind them all the way up to 37, except you know Rocks Raquel is already 37. Um, but I'm gonna grind up to 36, I believe. I think that's fair because I don't think we're gonna gain more than one level in the in the gym itself. So. Before we end off, let's just quickly check what we've caught. Saxophonic. Bold. Not the worst. Uh, Raichu does have some uh, physical moves that I would have liked to take take into account. And lonely. I'll, I'll hold off on you, Miss Aquaria. And Elizaveta. Oh, you're careful. That <laughs> I was wondering, like, what, what was the problem with you again? <laughs> oh lord. Yeah. I uh, think I'm gonna see you guys in the next time. Goodbye.